Coming up on today's show, that cute little Honda Urban EV has been spied, testing, and it looks good. Tesla cheapens cars they're selling in China, and a new bill in the UK could change the way everyone charges their EVs. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. It's the end of the week. It's Friday, twenty third of November, and it's Martin Lee here. And I've been through every EV story today that I can find online, basically, so you don't have to. The point. Me being here is to save you time, and thank you very much to another big time saver. That would be myev.com. They help me make this show. It's a website all about buying and selling used EVs. New EVs, lovely and all that kind of stuff, but holy moly, they can be pricey. A used one could be the bargain of the century if you find it at myev.com.、Uh, USA only, by the way. You can also anywhere you live in the world learn and research about EVs on myev.com. A quick bit of news I forgot to mention earlier in the week. Thank you to Ray in Canada for poking me on email to remind me to say this: Tesla's Navigate on Autopilot is finally coming to Canada. According to another Elon tweet, he was replying to a question from the Model Three Owners Club. For those with Autopilot Two and software V9, then Drive on or Navigate on Autopilot will be released later next week. Some news about an ongoing story this week: Carlos Ghosn, the man behind the success of the Nissan Leaf, and driving the Renault Zoe as well. Of course, he、uh, used to run more recently, overseeing the. Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance. The board of directors have made a statement at Nissan. They say this: the board of directors at Nissan Motor Company met today at the company's global headquarters in Yokohama. At the beginning of the session, the board acknowledged the significance of the matter and confirmed that the long-standing alliance partnership with Renault remains unchanged. After reviewing a detailed report of, in, of the internal investigation, the board voted unanimously. To discharge Carlos Ghosn as chairman, to discharge Carlos Ghosn as a director, to discharge Greg Kelly、uh, as representative director. To, they also promised to study the creation of special、uh, committees to appropriately take advice from an independent third party regarding governance. So I get a sense here. There's a corporate corporate governance issue of actually, if your chairman has been arrested, whatever the outcome of that process, whether Those legal proceedings go further, or whether they don't go any further, and no charges are pressed, then、uh, he's got. First of all, he's gone from Nissan, but also, how did the internal investigation that they say they've done, what that, whatever that brought up, which they passed on to the police, how did? The corporate governance work in that situation, so that's why they're going to be looking at that. Also, really interesting. The very first line of that 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 press statement says they are as committed as ever to the long-standing alliance. Now, this follows a couple of articles. One was Clean Technica, something in the FT, the Financial Times as well. These stories that were floating around the last couple of days were on various different threads. I'll I'll pre-see it for you. It was along the lines of Carlos Ghosn. Had some sort of grand Machiavellian vision for a unification of Renault Nissan, maybe even Renault Nissan Mitsubishi, and either for that to be some sort of Renault takeover of Nissan because they own Renault own more stock of Nissan than Nissan own stock of Renault, and so even though Renault. Uh, were a, a, a smaller company, they would almost do a, a sort of merger, but it would be a takeover. And politically, Nissan didn't want that. I even read some comments to actually this was very convenient for Nissan because they didn't want what he would have pushed through. And if the board didn't want it, I don't understand how it would have happened if the board were against it. But maybe there were some cost savings and things like that that would have been just too irresistible not to do. Anyway, so there was a lot of politics at play as well. I won't go down that rabbit hole because let's face it, you and I are here for the EVs. Let's talk about those. A small piece of news I want to lead on to next, but I think this is really important. Funnily enough, it's big but small. It's small but big. Bear with me. VW Volkswagen has added a dedicated EV section to its homepage here in the UK. I know what you're thinking. It's just a web page and it's just a section. But I think it speaks volumes. It's it's titled electric cars, not hybrid cars or anything. But it's titled electric cars. And when you go to the Volkswagen UK website, it sells you on 
the upcoming range, the positive aspects of EV ownership in general as well, and that includes the ID, the ID Cross, the ID Buzz, and the ID Vision concept cars. I recently told you on the podcast about a trademark registration, at least here in Europe, if not around the world, for the brand names to be numerical. ID One to ID Four could be those. The ID could be. The ID one. In fact, the code name that they've been using, and it's been in German newspapers, but never really referenced. Certainly by the company, is the ID Neo, and they've been using this code name Neo for the the first one. And I rather stupidly had a bit of a dull moment and said on Twitter, "But why would they use the code name Neo?" And someone、uh, very quickly replied and went, "N E O O N E." It's the ID one, and I was like, "Oh yeah," but they didn't want to call it the ID one. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was having a slow moment. I have quite a lot of those the older I get.、Uh, so if you go to the VW homepage, you've got the Volkswagen logo top left. That's sort of typical on most websites. You can always go to kind of top left and click on a logo to get back to the home. Then the first menu, it's along the top, so it runs horizontally along the top, and the menu items read new cars, electric cars, used cars. So they've put it. They haven't buried it anywhere. They've put new cars, electric cars, used cars, offers, owners, fleet, technology, and then help. And that's along the top of their website. And so I think you know it's a small thing, but all of a sudden, I don't know what their 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 traffic, their footfall would be on the VW UK homepage. I'm presuming. A pretty reasonable amount, actually.、Uh, the first time that I know of a VW brand website featuring the electrification, the electric cars link so prominently. Needless to say, I'm totally delighted at this. They're not making cars, but they're promoting them. <laughs> you can't not making many EVs, but you can certainly learn about them. Lee Edwards is the digital manager for Volkswagen in the UK, and Lee said this, and I quote: "Electric cars are not just a topic for the future; they are here right now. There is increased focus." Across the industry, so we wanted to make it even easier for customers to become aware of our electric models, how to charge them, the potential cost savings they offer, and also to start showcasing the future ID range. It's Volkswagen.co.uk. I always say I'll put a link in the show notes, but. I think you know how to get to that website, and it's fascinating. Let me know if where you live around the world, whether it's America, Australia, parts of Europe, Asia, if you check out your local VW website, if they are featuring the electric cars banner quite so prominently. Let me know. You can feedback any time to the show. You can email me hello at evnewsdaily dot com.、Uh, when you click on that link, by the way, the subsections on it, you know, like the little drop down menu, it goes electric cars, about our electric cars, all about charging, Volkswagen innovation, cheaper than you think. That's a heading, cheaper than you think, and electric technology. So they're covering off anything in there、um, in, in the VW website about how Regen works, how to charge it, what is a glossary of terms, grants that are available, the cost of ownership, the fact that servicing doesn't really exist, and that there's nothing really to service on an electric car, the heritage of electric cars, some of the concept cars, and it of course introduces the ID range. It does still list the E Up, which is the electric up, and the E Golf. Good luck buying one of those. The stories that I've heard from people that have gone, oh, I went to try and buy an e-golf, and maybe this is an American stories. Yeah, not many around, are they? They're certainly not making them in large, large numbers. But staying in Germany, and electric trucks are now going to be exempt from all. M A U T. Do I pronounce it Mount Road Tolls? Anyway, electric trucks are going to be exempt from road tolls in Germany from 2019. Christian、uh, Hogenroth is the sales director for trucks at Scania and said this, and I quote: "Significant CO2 reductions in combination with better economics drive the shift to sustainable transportation solutions."、Uh, of course, Scania、uh, makers of big lorries and trucks as well. The legislation. In Germany, encompasses vehicles that operate on gas, so CNG,、uh, compressed natural gas, and LNG, and also battery electric 
trucks. Considering,、uh, and that's so. When I say trucks, if you're listening in North America, not like pickups, but you're talking like big commercial vehicles. Considering distances on toll roads in Germany, the exception from paying tolls will be most favourable for those drivers that do longer distances, and that, in other words, is transport hauliers. For the really heavy five-axle Euro six trucks, the coming rates. For road tolls, will be raised for everyone else from 13.5 euro cents per kilometer to 18.7 cents、uh, per kilometer. Electric vehicles, however, totally exempt. For the long distance trucker with an annual mileage of say 100,000 kilometers a year, which is pretty normal, the annual savings in tolls alone could be 18,700 euros. All of a sudden, buying one of those electric trucks when they arrive doesn't seem like such a bad idea when you're saving <laughs> almost 20,000 euros a year. So that's a compelling case, isn't it? Because we buy you and I buy cars on would they look nice in our driveway? Or outside our house, commercial fleet operators look at total cost of ownership, the TCO, and they go, "We're going to lease this for three or five or eight years. We do this many miles. What's our total cost of ownership?" They are not emotional at all about the badge on the front. Well, concept cars have a habit of being watered down, but Honda promised. They swore that when we first saw the cute little urban EV at the Frankfurt Motor Show, that they would stick with the retro styling. And that really cutesy design language. If they ever come to make one, very shortly after there was so much interest in it, they said, "Okay, we're going to make it." It it looks like a late 1970s Honda Civic for any car nerd, with those really distinctive round. Uh, lights at the front look like two big eyes staring at you.、Uh, even though it's covered in bulky camouflage, these new spy pictures of actually it was in the UK because I I kind of looked at the road signs in the background of the picture and thought、ah, they're UK signs.、Uh, they've blurred out the number plate of the test vehicle, but. Definitely UK roads. The lines of this new car look good. You can't see a lot because it's the camouflage, where they've actually made it a bit bulkier in certain places, as well as just being a, a you know a tight wrap around the car. It has turned from a three door to a five door. When it was a three door, by the way, the two front doors,、uh, like suicide doors, they. They were hinged at the back. That's all gone. More conventional now. Five door inside. I would. I, you can't really see inside on these pictures as it drove past the photographer. But I would fully expect the four armchairs in the concept to make right way for a, a more traditional five seater. Well, the prototype has the invisible door handles of the concept and no wing mirrors. But instead, it's got cameras like the Audi e-tron. Or the Lexus ES, as it's a small city car, the range it's not going to be stellar. It'll probably sit, I don't know, 150 to 175 miles. Honda saying that they're going to be using very energy dense batteries for this pure electric car here in、uh, in the UK, the European market as well. They've also warned us in advance it won't be cheap. It'll be a premium small car. Well, production starts. Unbelievably, actually, in 2019, and Honda have got all the resources you could possibly want. A huge manufacturer, I think, they are still the world's biggest engine manufacturer because they make so many motorbike and lawnmower engines. But I think they are the world's biggest engine maker. So they've got the resources, everything you need, the really smart engineers and designers in place to make an EV. You can pre-order it. They say very soon, even before they fully release the final version. They do say that they will work with potential customers to understand the final specs, to understand what kind of car they'll be getting. It looks like to me really one-on-one -on -one competition with the electric Mini. Which these days is kind of ironic because the Mini just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not Mini at all, but it looks like it's going to be. If you go to buy one of these small, and they're not really small, but kind of city cars for European markets, the Mini or the Honda Urban EV would be one of two choices. I have a lot of love for the Mini. I used to own one, by the way, Mini Cooper. Ten years ago, two thousand and eight. Yep. So used to drive one of those. Great little car. At bags of personality inside. That the big round dial between the passenger and the driver, mimicking the nineteen sixties. Of course, mini styling. But the external styling of the Honda Urban EV is so sexy. And also, 
Inside, if you remember, on the concept car, they had just one single big screen. So you know how the Tesla Model 3 has uh, more of a kind of a widescreen monitor, sort of a widescreen TV. I don't know if it's 16 by 9 ratio in the Model 3, but it sort of sits lower on the dash at sort of steering wheel level. The Honda Urban EV had a very low, sort of... um, not very high, but very wide. It went the width of the car, and it sort of sat behind the steering wheel, then went all along the dash to the passenger side as well. I would be amazed if that made its way into the production car, but what a fantastic thing if it did. Moving to BMW, October deliveries of the BMW electrified cars did really well again. BMW iPerformance, BMW i and Mini totaled 13,000 units worldwide. That's up almost 40% on the same month from 2017. Sales of BMW Group electrified cars uh, to the year to date, so up until now they've done 110,000 in the group. And once again, BMW say it confirms their position as a leading global provider. And yes, up there with Tesla and the Chinese names, which aren't so familiar perhaps in the West, that's a really good number. Electrified vehicles are playing an increasingly significant role in the overall BMW sales charts. In October, for instance, it was 18.4% of BMW 5 Series and almost 25% of the 2 Series had a plug with them. The BMW i3, which is getting its third iteration of the battery up to 120 amp hours, is also increasing. It achieved increasing sales. It was launched back in 2013, and it grew its sales by 10% in October. BMW Group offer nine electrified vehicles, and they're, boy, oh boy, there's some names when you think about them. Uh, so the easy ones to list off, the BMW 5 Series uh, has a plug. The Mini Cooper Countryman has a plug. The i3 pure electric and range extender the i8 of course great hybrid uh, the bmw 225xe i performance this is where the names get a little bit longer the 330e i performance which i have a friend here, actually here in the uk who tried to buy one and they were like yeah we can sell you one late next year he was a, he's a fleet buyer and uh, he always has company cars and he was like what like early next year and they were like nah not early next year summer onwards so i don't know who he was speaking to but he went and head and bought something else Uh, the bmw x5 well the x5 40e the big one the 740e and the kind of the the long one that you would get chauffeured in the 740le has a plug there's the bmw x1 X Drive 25 LE i Performance, which is sold exclusively in China, and yes, that's a long badge. BMW X1 X Drive 25 LE i Performance. <laughs> that's a name for one car. You can only get it in China, though. Uh, the company wants to get it to a target of 140,000 cars this year with a plug, and next year to half a million. And that is a sign of their ambitions in 2019. With <sighs> There's so much jam tomorrow at the moment, particularly with some of the German makers, because they don't really want to do it before 2020, which is when the new emissions laws kick in here in the UK. But 2019 is a pivotal year for EVs. Just look at that figure. 140,000 this year, which they're going to get to. Next year, half a million. Think what they'll have to do to sell that many cars. Lovely. Well, talking Tesla, uh, they've announced that they're cutting prices of their original Model S and X cars between 12% and 26%, despite the ongoing trade war between the US and China. And these are the prices that are dropping in China. Apart from lowering the prices of those two flagship vehicles in China, they also opted to adjust the price of the Model 3. Now, the Model 3 is now open for orders in China. According to Simon Alvarez over at Tesla Rati, China's opted to make uh, to place the steep import taxes for vehicles entering the country that weren't made in China. It meant that Tesla's EVs, which, of course, totally made in Fremont at the moment, had this 40% tariff. In a statement to Reuters, Tesla noted that the company would be lowering the prices of its vehicles in the country 12 to 26%, and that cost would be absorbed by Tesla in order to get more cars in people's hands. Once they start making cars in Shanghai, and I'm still trying to find the definitive answer on what making a car is, is can you make a car that doesn't have a battery ship it to china pop in a chinese battery made by not just 
Panasonic, but uh, many of the other Chinese cell makers, which Tesla said they will uh, work with on the Model 3 in China only, not exclusively Tesla, but uh, Panasonic for the first time. Does that count as made in China, therefore no tariffs at all? Some people say, yes, of course, they just need to bolt something onto it and it's made in China. Other people saying, no, 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 they've actually got to do more than that. So still looking for a definitive answer. Final two stories then. And actually, no, let's do, let's do three. I've got, to, I've got time. It's 20 minutes. I've got time. First of all, one of the really big things that bugs EV owners is about how to charge your car when you're out and about. And a member of parliament here in the UK today has tried to get that on the discussion topic and sorted. His name is Bill Wiggin. What a wonderfully British name. Hello, it's Wiggin, Bill Wiggin. Uh, He's a member of parliament for the Conservative Party, and he proposed the Electric Vehicles Standardised Recharging Bill in the House of Commons. What he called for was for the current law to be amended to create an industry standard to charge your EV when it's out in public. And if it was successful, say, here in the UK, I wonder how it would quickly would spread to where you're listening around the world. Uh, It includes, his proposal was a single connector type, uh, which I don't think is ever going to happen in a million years because there's too many cars on the road now with different connectors. He also said to Parliament that the most popular connector was a five-pin type one connector. Is that true? He said that CCS is found very rarely uh in the uk Mm. i don't know the exact numbers of how many ccs plugs are out there but i think it's weird to say that there's this rare type of plug called ccs Mm. anyway um uh, maybe the type one plug is the most common because it's uh fitted on a particular lots of places that uh, I don't realise. But it seems weird. He didn't mention Chadamo, but he did mention that Type 2 is very, very popular. What he did do, though, was say that regardless of connectors, you need to get universal access to charge points and how they're paid for. The bill was described as a breath of fresh air by the AA, the Automobile Association. If you're not in the UK, uh, that's one of the companies here in the country that you can subscribe to. And when you break down, they come and pick you up. Of course, not many EVs break down. There aren't any moving bits. However, we'll see what these companies do in the future if they diversify into things like selling you insurance and all those kind of things. Uh, This is Money uh, said that the electric vehicles bill aimed to make provision for the standardisation of payment and charging and vehicle connectors. Uh, Fleet News said that in the parliamentary motion from Bill Wiggin to introduce the bill, he pointed out there's a range of methods for starting a charge, for paying for the charge, different public charge points, everyone's doing it their own way at the moment, and charges have a variety of different connectors. Edmund King is the president of the Automobile Association. He responded by saying how to pay for a charge at different charging stations can be baffling. Many charging networks require their own apps or their RFID cards, which are necessary to even start a charge. Some of them need a subscription. Others require preloading with funds. And some make a separate connection charge, and then you make another payment for the actual energy used. A few charging networks, says Edmund King, uh, a few charging networks accept contactless cards as well as the network RFID card. And surely, he says, this is the simplest method. Yes, you would have to agree with him that tapping your card is by far and away the simplest method. Uh, There's nothing more frustrating, he says, than arriving at a charger which you don't have the appropriate app. You've got to find it, install it, register, download it, load it with funds before you can even plug in and charge, assuming your smartphone is even charged and you can get a signal. Meanwhile, the operator, all of a sudden, has your deposit and you may never use that network again. You may have to put on £20 onto the app and you might might be a one-time use of £2.50 and they've got your money if you never use it again. There's already a facility to create uniformity, actually, through an act that was passed. See, we have bills and acts here. And so this is a bill that's being proposed, but we already have an act called the Automated and Electric Vehicles Act of 2018. So this has been passed already. And actually, there is something in this which enables regulation to be introduced should the government wish. Now, I've checked up on the exact wording of it, and it says this. Regulations may impose requirements on operators of public charging or refuelling points in connection with the components of public charging or refuelling points that provide the means by which vehicles connect to such points. 
So that sounds to me like they are reserving the right, even without this extra bill, to be able to say regulations may impose requirements on the operators. They may say if you have a public charging station, it must be available to everybody. That is not just a select group of people with an RFID card or a certain app or even people who don't have a smartphone. I mean, let's face it, if you've got an EV, you've got a smartphone. But anyway, they could say, look, just like energy and clean running water, in the future, if we're all driving electric cars, then public chargers need some sort of regulation by the government as an essential utility and therefore, that they should all have a little tap thing on the front, just like you with your debit and your credit card, just tap it and start a charge and pay for what you use. That, by the sounds of it, is already within the law that we have here in the UK, something that they could push through. I thought I'd mention that. I know it's a, a story about where I'm recording the podcast, but it does. other countries do look at other countries, for instance, and if, if the UK put something in uh, next year to ensure that all public charges were retrofitted with these little things that you could tap your card on, I'm sure other countries would follow. In fact, in Europe, it's, it, it's not as bad in Europe. There is a, there is a more joined-up system in, uh, in the rest of Europe in terms of billing. Electric vehicles, uh, electric vehicle sales are likely to jump over uh, the next two or three years to whole new levels as prices fall and more options are available, according to EV Hambro, BlackRock's global head of sector investing customers will have more opportunities to move away from uh, fossil cars to evs and the options won't be restricted to a few auto suppliers he said in an interview on cnbc on a show called squawk box now it's the thing that you and i will find the least surprising ever but of course on a mainstream financial show like cnbc uh, sometimes you need reminding of the basics earlier this year the international energy agency predicted that evs ownership going to jump to 125 million around the world by 2030 spurred on by government policies and those purchasing pure electric cars today the american chipmaker nvidia signed separate deals with the chinese ev startup xpeng motors and singulato and sf motors to help them develop self-driving technology despite ongoing trade tensions between the u.s and china Final story today, talking of China, GAC, which is the new energy firm which sits underneath GAC Motor, GACNE, uh, is the subsidiary of that, unveiled its latest EV brand. It's called ION, the ION S, and it's uh, a new brand alongside its other e-cars. According to the Climate Samurai website, the ION S has a driving mileage of 500 kilometres. That's right up there with things like the 64-kilowatt-hour Hyundai Kona and Kia e Nero. You've seen those Bjorn Nyland videos where he um, sort of hypermiles a little bit and gets 500 Ks out of them. And it's equipped with level two assisted driving and a Bosch stability system. It's available in China from 2019. Uh, GACNE, which is, uh, so like I say, lives under GAC, has a brand new app where you can download the app, customize the car for exactly how you want. You order it on the app and then your car arrives. And it's their ambition to transcend Tesla with their technology and innovation. It's one thing to say that, that you're going to out-Tesla Tesla. Tesla. Uh, I would remind you that in the 10 months of the year so far, then GACNE made a smidge under 14,000 vehicles. That's a slow three weeks for Tesla to make 14,000 vehicles. In fact, they delivered over 14,000 vehicles to California State alone in Q2 of this year. But good luck to them. I say to everybody, thank you very much for listening today. It's been a longie. So much good news around EVs at the moment. I mean, I could make this twice the length, but you don't want that. <laughs> no, nobody needs that much of me. Thank you very much to my EV for setting question of the week this week. You've got until Sunday to send me your answer. Uh, it is this. Since most dealers today are not very well educated around EVs and don't carry enough inventory, what would you choose? Would you rather the dealers got their act together and we kept that model? Or would you like to try something new, maybe where someone brings a car to your workplace or home? You try out an EV for a couple of days and someone teaches you all about it. But in return, you pay a fee or a commission, like a new way of buying a car. Thank you very much to the 120 patrons of the podcast who do support me in making the show every single day. It is a, a considerable effort some days. And uh, 
those people really do spur me on. Uh, you can check out, if you're interested, the details. Uh, it's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. It's totally optional, of course, and maybe for $5 a month, which is like a posh coffee, really, that you'd be doing without, or even $10 a month, like a super posh coffee. Uh, it, it's not a huge amount individually, but it does all add up, and it really helps pay for the costs of making the show. And actually, I know that actually whatever amount, uh, is a huge amount to some people. So I, I really do appreciate every every single uh, person that supports the show. There are now 304 previous news episodes online. There's interviews online. All the podcasts are online for free, and they always will be from the usual places you get podcasts from. If you subscribe on any of those usual platforms, well, then you get the podcast first and free and automatically. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. And for Saturday's edition, I'll catch you tomorrow.